Hey everybody, welcome back to Disaster Communications. Today I'm going over the uh, Lilligo T Echo Board. And this one I really like. And it's one of the newest ones put out by Lilligo. Let me put it here under the camera so you can see a little better. This is the newest one put out by Lilligo. And again, if we're having a hard time here in the U.S. getting these from local vendors. So if you're looking for a place to get that, you can get it straight from Lilligo from China. I have a link in the description. And uh, you can get that directly from them. That's where we got this one from. Uh, we ordered, My team and I, we ordered four of them. And I want to say it took about two and a half weeks. It, it wasn't horrible. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's not our two-day shipping that we're used to. So if you want one, you can get it from them. And it is the, it's probably the most popular one right now. It's uh, low power consumption, has the low power microprocessor in it. And uh, it has the NRF 52840 board. And it does have uh, Bluetooth BLE 5.0 and NFC. That 5.0 Bluetooth uh, definitely boasts a farther range. So you don't have to have your phone. You know, kind of like if you get too far out when you're listening to it with your Bluetooth headphones. Uh, this one will give you a little bit for the range. Has the Simtex SX1262. And this is the 915 megahertz version. There is other options available. So when you're ordered, make sure you pick the right one uh, for your area, for your country. And you can tell that by uh, a lot of times just uh, looking for the FCC list or... You know, just Google it. Uh, it does have a, you know, L76K GNSS uh, receiver. Supports GPS, GLONASS, and a couple other ones that I don't know how to say. Uh, it does have the UFL connect antenna connector. And it's got a reset program and capacitive touch buttons, which I'll show you that. 1.54 inch E-Link display it's a little bit different display than i'm used to i kind of like it um now there is one of these versions that have the optional bme 280 humidity and pressure sensor which sort of kind of give you some information there uh comes with case and the battery and let's jump over here in deep on it and just give you a little quick tour so there's really not much to say it's it's a uh you know it's a regular feels like a 3D, not it doesn't feel 3D to me, but uh, just a plastic case and a little antenna. Make sure when they come in the boxes, the antenna's off of them. So I'll always be sure to put the antenna on first. Here's the touch capacitive button. When I push it, I'm not 100% sure what it does. That's the thing about these is we're we're putting different firmware on them. So like what you think this button may do for like uh, Laura may be different for us. So it's got a top button. I do know that when you're going to program it and you want to update the firmware, you plug the, uh, you, this one has a USB-C on the side. I really like that. So when you plug that into your computer, you have to push this top button twice. Click, click, kind of like that. And it will show up as a um, hard drive on your, on your computer there so um the bottom button is the power if you just hold it down it'll power up and a long press and a short two tap turns on the little backlight feature so we get that to adjust to it so that's an old message i'd sent before Single press of the bottom button scrolls through all the button, all the different nodes. These are different nodes that it's heard, their distance, and the iPad is one of my T beams. So that 129 hours that the guy is no longer in range, and this is your status. Then also shows the uh, GPS screen. 
in the battery voltage and stuff like that. You may want to get like a little case to carry it in if you're if you're going to carry it on a pouch. You could probably do something here like with the uh, you're going to put it in a look a little pocket. Uh, I don't think I've got that pouch down here, but anyways, you could you could upgrade the antenna if you wanted to go with one of the higher gain antennas on it. That may be a little big for this little guy, but so the reason I have these one, they're all all together. I'm more of an experimenter, so I like tearing into things, or I don't mind the open circuitry, kind of like like the TV. And I'm just going to set them beside each other, give you an idea how you know the difference in case. And I struggle with getting this light to. I don't know if it's a quick press or a slow. There we go. So just know, you know, there's some little quirks like that there. I don't really know and understand what the lights do. I don't know if it's like blue for charging, or, you know, red if it's dead or what. There's there's no manual for it because, again, we're flashing. He's putting different uh, operating systems on them, different firmware on them. But just to show you the difference, if we put this in a case, you know, the T-Beam versus the T-Echo. Both these are, all these are made by Lilygo, and just kind of giving you a size comparison. This one has a little bit different screen, but I'm going to say this, these are OLEDs. I'm going to say this screen definitely probably uses a lot less juice. Uh, this is my daughter's. She will charge it overnight, and it would usually get her two days out of that. So it'll last two days. But uh, I really like it. Uh, again, if you want one of those, I don't think they're, they're, they may still be on Amazon. I've got that link on the, in the description. But if they are sold out there, you're going to have to order it from China. And that's through the Lilygo link. And I've got that there in the description as well. So I just wanted to show you that. Uh, the firmware flashing is still the same on all these. Just how you get to it, I guess, is the only different thing. The T-Beam, you don't have to double tap anything to get to it. The Lilygo, the Helltech board, and there's a couple others that you have to double tap. And, and that'll set it into programming mode. There's a lot of information on how to program these, but we'll go over each one. I just wanted to get, get you a close-up of it, kind of show you some of the different functions of it. They all pretty much are the same. You got three buttons. Some have two. The Hell Tech board has two, but again, most of the time you're controlling these from the the phone, uh, the phone, iPad, uh, Android device, you know, whatever your device is. Uh, it doesn't have to be a cell phone. You don't have to have cell your service. You can get a burner phone. Somebody asked me that. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to go to the box store, just get one of those fifty dollar Android phones. What I've been using is. I've got an Android tablet here. I really like this because it's uh, I put a wet uh, hard hard shell case on it, hand grip on the back. It does come with a lanyard. You don't have to have the lanyard on it, and you don't have to have the hand strap. I do use Android, and I use iOS. So uh, my girls, my my wife and my daughter, they use iPhone. My iPhone is a little older, so. Uh, it doesn't, uh, the app's not supported on that. I think it's for iOS 16 or later, so be sure to check that. Uh, so I just use, I have an iPad and a tablet. Uh, the tablet here usually runs with me in the, the the Tahoe. And I just leave, I've got a tablet mount. And I just let that set in the dash and I can watch the map as I'm driving around. So anyways, video's probably long enough for just going over the T-Echo, so... Thank you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate that. That helps out. And one of these days we're going to get out of the uh, Mesh-tastic and we'll kind of expand in some other modes. I've got some ideas about some video series I'm going to do. Uh, other ways that we can communicate and, and uh, how we can maybe even legally talk encrypted and use encryption legally. So that's some ideas for you. And, uh, so till then, thank you and we'll see you.